Sum up this this section of the conversation in, uh, in terms of this idea of the de- definition of ready, right? I mean, all these things we're talking about is is prep. You, you, you know, you, you're you don't want to enter your sprint with the, these things not being correct. Is that the, is that a right way to say it? Yeah, I, and the thing I think we haven't touched on yet is just we've kind of intimated how far you do this in advance. And the rule of thumb I typically give teams is you want very, very fine grain, small, clear, ready to fit inside of a sprint stories or work for like one and a half to two sprints ahead of you, right? So this is a rolling process you're doing all the time. I'm not trying to get 18 sprints ahead of myself in this very fine grained work uh, conversations that we're having. Right. Okay. Makes right. sense. And I'm, 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 I also want to say when you say that I getting it ready, it really brings up the whole concept of a definition of ready, which is really part to me, hand in hand with refinement these days. Um, and you can treat that to a different levels as a, as a quality gate, if you will. That is, they have to have a certain level of quality before you allow to, to proceed. Now, do you want to be heavy handed with that gate or use it as a light sort of reference, double check, sanity check? I think that's up to the team and how it works for the team. But you should have some criteria on that list that you're sort of judging the stories or the PBIs that you have. Are they ready to go in? And I think there's a handful that make sense here. I like to say, first of all, does it actually fit in a sprint, right? I have to have pretty good confidence that it fits. And then because it's fit, then I have to understand the acceptance criteria. Number two, the acceptance criteria. Three, I want to then then size it. This is where I size the story points. This is where I might differ with Jane a little bit. She might size it a bit earlier. I only size it after I've decided it's fit and I've got the acceptance criteria. Because if I don't know the quality dial that you're trying to set, I really don't know how big it is. I think dependencies have to be identified and have a known resolution, whether that is now or sometime in the future, I have to know it and understand it. And the team has to have, and those dependencies include both technical dependencies, resource dependencies, and understanding dependencies, right? So do I need a wireframe before we could pull this in? Do I need uh, a certain resource or like a DBA available? Those have to be all resolved. And the team has to have general belief they can get it done, right? So that's basically my list. Is this a hard and fast rule that you must have all these down and dirty? No, the team, I think, can decide. But I think it's worth thinking about and reviewing that before you allow a story to go forward. Well, it's kind of interesting, Earl. I was actually doing some Kanban work with a client earlier this morning. And the thing that's fascinating me about Kanban is... In each of our stages, we have exit criteria and almost universally when it's working with a software team, there is some analysis kind of stage. It's analysis, requirements, discovery, something. And in Kanban, you need exit criteria at that stage, right? So Kanban is going to say, thou shall have exit criteria. And by the way, if you set up exit criteria for an analysis column in Kanban, it looks awfully like the kinds of stuff you would put into a Scrum definition of ready. Right. Right. And you know, I've seen people say, I hate definitions of ready because you're adding unnecessary gates to stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, do you want you here's the trade-off, right? Because our goal is to have flow through the the sprint. That's our goal. We don't want to have work piling up on the sprint where we have work in progress because we know that work in progress is generally evil. So we want to avoid that at all costs, right? So how do we keep it flowing? Don't let it get too bad. Now, that's why I say let the team decide the level of intensity they want to do with that DOR. If it's flowing fine, relax, right? If you're finding you're getting work in progress, you might want to up that definition a little bit and get a little more serious about it if you're seeing things stranded mid sprint because things you said, oh, we should have known this ahead of time. And it's funny, I usually tell teams it's an optional. If you want it, we'll set it up. And I would say at least 70%, maybe more of the teams I work with are like, yes, we would like that, right? And, and we're looking at you know, three to five line items, right? If this thing's 20 line items, forget it. It's like yeah. having a 20 line item de- definition of done. You've gone way too far. It's way too fine grained. The teams are going to ignore it because it's too complicated. So it should be the kind of 
what are the things that bite you in your sprints that you want to remember to do before stuff enters the sprints? So these, this is kind of, you know, I think we've interwoven.